Do you know what would be delightful? To maybe watch television or just sit around the house or take a ride in the car without my father bringing up religion. See, father is a master at turning any conversation into a lecture about faith. Anything he reads, sees or hears in the media, it's like a prompt for him to hold forth on spirituality. Good God, I've even seen the man be inspired by weather patterns. Know that we're not alone, and there exists a power greater than anything we can conceive of on this earth, he says. Know that the courage of faith is a bravery surpassing that of even the assembled armies of the earth, he says. Faith will be tested, he says. Faith will be rewarded, he says, and says, and says. Please don't misunderstand. I am a believer. I've been brought up in the faith and strive to adhere to it. However, I find it increasingly difficult to be a blind follower. For if we fear to ask questions of faith, is that not an admission of doubt? An acknowledgement that our faith, our rock, our shield cannot withstand the slightest scrutiny? Father will have none of this and our exchanges increasingly escalate into shouts and angry tears. Know that we have been blessed beyond measure, he says, a pointed finger trembling inches from my face. Never forget, boy. Still, my questions persist. Lately, they even grow in number. Forgive me, I don't mean to be so critical of my father. He is unshakable in his belief, and, and that can be inspiring. I think of my mother's recent passing, and a man less devout might have abandoned his convictions and strayed from his path. But not my father. I'll also admit that to those not ceaselessly subjected to his spoutings, the father's quite charming. The impression he gives is not that of a wild-eyed zealot. He's patiently persuasive and has a certain charisma. You know, several people in our town have come round to his way of thinking. That includes some of our more notable residents, elected officials, captains of industry, members of law enforcement even. Good friends to have. I can see many of them now as father and I enter the clearing in the woods behind our home. Some of them avert their eyes, but that's because they're new. Others offer a friendly wave and a warm smile. And Father's at it again, telling me about the demands of faith and the comfort that awaits after our earthly trials have ceased. A comfort no less than eternity. All this talk about religion goes a very long way toward explaining why my sister is bound upon that altar. But it doesn't make what I've been told I have to do any easier.